Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, trying to solve a first order differential equation using the method, the method of separation of variables, we're going to use the escape velocity principle. When some rocket blasts off from the Earth, it has to have a certain amount of velocity in order to get away from the Earth. And so what we want to do here is come up with an equation that describes the velocity as a function of distance away from the Earth. And of course, if the rocket wants to keep going, that velocity that it has initially should be at least the minimum, the escape velocity to get away from the Earth. Well, first of all, we'll start with the equation that the acceleration can be defined as a change in the velocity as a function of time. We also know that F equals ma. And in the case of gravity, the force between two objects experiencing gravity, we can say that F can also be written as g small m big m that would be the two mass of the two objects divided by the distance between the square so that would be the force and that is equal to m times a which means if we then get rid of the m on both sides we can say that the acceleration can be written as g times m divided by r squared r being the distance from the object or from the object that you're being pulled to to the position where you're at all right, now let's see here. We can write that a little bit more simply. We can say that A can be written as uh, K times one over R squared. So that would be the general equation for the, for the relationship between the acceleration and the position away from the Earth. Now, what we can also say is that if, if the distance R is equal to the radius of the Earth, R, big R being the radius of the Earth, then, then we can say that A is equal to G. And of course, G would be directed towards the Earth, so that would be the negative direction as the velocity is positive that way. So maybe we can go ahead and put a negative G there, a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then if we plug that in here, we can solve for K. We can say that minus G is equal to K times 1 over R squared. So in other words, we can say that k is equal to minus g r squared. Or we can say that it's a positive g r squared if you let g be in minus 9.8. Either way, will work. So next, what I want to do is I want to relate acceleration to velocity and time. And I want to relate acceleration to distance. Essentially, what I want is I want an equation that relates velocity and distance and gets rid of acceleration altogether. So what I can do here is I can say that A is equal to dv dt and multiply this times dr dr. Now of course dr divided by dr is 1, so I haven't changed anything. But then when I rearrange the variables here, I can write this as dv dr by putting dr over here times dr dt. And of course dr dt is velocity, so this can be written as dv dr times velocity. I also have an equation here where a is equal to k times 1 over r squared. If I now relate those two to each other, so I can say that instead of writing a, I can write k over 1 over r k times 1 over r squared. So k times 1 over r squared is equal to v times dv dr. And now what I've done is I've changed the equation that has acceleration in it and time in it. I changed it to an equation that only has velocity and distance. So here now I have a relationship between velocity and position or distance away from the Earth and that's the equation I want to solve. Also keep in mind that k is equal to minus g times r squared. So I can write this as, I'll leave k there for now and I'll go ahead and solve the equation first. So now I want to use the separation of variables by separating the r and the v. So here I can write that I'm going to turn the equation around so I can write dv times v so put on the left side, is equal to k times 1 over r squared dr. And now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. And so I get on the left side, I end up with v squared over 2 is equal to here. That's, that would be, well, I can write this as k times the integral of r to the minus 2 dr. The reason I want to write it like that is because it's easier to integrate. So I add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So I have r to the, oh, that's a terrible looking r, r to the minus 1 over minus 1 times k times plus a constant of integration. Of course, this constant accounts for the 
integration of both sides of the equation. All right, simplifying this a little bit more. I have a minus here, but the k will be minus dr squared, so I end up with a v squared over 2 is equal to minus 1 over r, because r to the minus 1 goes to the denominator. k would be a minus gr squared, and then plus a constant of integration. And then if I simplify things just a little bit more, and bring this over here, so then if I go ahead and take care of the negative sign, I can write this as one half v squared is equal to the negative cancel out the negative, so I end up with a g r squared in the numerator divided by small r plus a constant of integration. All right, next what I want to do here is get rid of that constant of integration. So how can I do that? My initial conditions are that when the position is equal to the Earth's radius, my velocity will be the initial velocity. So let's, let's write that down. So when r equals the radius of the Earth, v equals v initial. That will be the initial velocity of the spaceship when it leaves the Earth. All right, let's do that. So I can go ahead and plug these numbers in here. So 1 half v initial squared is equal to g r squared divided by the radius of the Earth. So I'm replacing r by the radius of the Earth and v by the initial velocity plus c, and then from here, I can say therefore that c is equal to 1 half v initial squared minus g r squared over big R, and of course, this cancels out that, so I don't even have to write it like that. I can simply write it like g times r. So there's my constant of integration. If I plug that in, I get the following. I get 1 half v squared is equal to g r squared over r plus a constant of integration which would be plus 1 half v initial squared minus g times r. So there we have the relationship between the velocity as a function of position. Now if you don't like that form, if you like it simply as v on one side, what we can do is we can multiply both sides by 2 and take the square root of both sides, and if we do that, we get the following. v as a function of position is equal to, 2 times this gives me 2gr squared over r, plus the 2 cancels out here, so I get v initial squared minus 2gr, and then take the square root of that, and so I could also write it like that. So now we have it simply as v on the left side, v as a function of r, and that's kind of a sad looking r, so there we go is equal to that. Okay, the last thing we want to do is figure out what should be the minimum velocity the rocket should have so that it will never get pulled back to the Earth. Remember, the Earth's gravity will always be tugging on the rocket, slowing it down, so once it leaves the Earth, it'll slow down, and what you want to do is find the minimum velocity, in other words, the escape velocity of the rocket, so that it will never get pulled back to the Earth, which means that this velocity will never go to zero or below zero. This velocity should never become negative. Now notice that if you look at this term right here, it's divided by r. r is the position of the rocket away from the Earth. And when this goes to very large distances, in other words, when r reaches infinity, this term goes to zero, which means that this quantity right here, one half the initial velocity squared minus dr, should always be zero or greater, or the rocket will get pulled back to the Earth. That requires that one half v initial squared minus gr to be bigger than zero. In other words, that means that v initial is equal, or v initial should always be bigger than 2gr and take the square root of that. So what I did was I moved the minus gr to the other side, became plus gr, multiply both sides by 2, and then took the square root of both sides, which means that the initial velocity should always be bigger than the square root of 2gr, and realizing that the g is 9.8 meters per second square and the radius of the earth is 6,378,000 meters we can figure out what the escape velocity would be of the earth so is that correct 6,378 i think it is all right let's try it 6378000 times 2 times 9.8 equals take the square root of that 
which means that the initial velocity must be greater than 11,180 meters per second, which is roughly about seven miles per second or a little bit over 11 kilometers per second. So that would be the initial velocity a spaceship should have in order to get away from the Earth. And that's how we figure that out. Quick review. Again, what we want here is we want an equation that relates velocity to position. We can do that by taking the initial concept of accelerations dv dt and then introducing the r variable in there so we can write accelerations dv dr times v. Also realizing that using f equals ma and the force of gravity according to Newton's law we can write the accelerations gm over r squared or a is equal to k times 1 over r squared and if we're at the surface of the earth then a equals negative g when you bring that all together you end up with this equation right here that allows you to this is what we call a first order differential equation and we can solve that by separating the variables using our technique of separation of variables and that's how it's done